afternoon, everybody, and you're all very welcome to today's event uh, on our Zoom webinar for Education National Project Update. We're delighted that so many of you have registered and that you've joined us today. Uh, and we're very, very pleased to have some, some of the panelists that we have today are really going to answer your questions. So the whole idea and the purpose of this afternoon's event is to show how we view Zoom uh, in education in Ireland, to tell some of the stories uh, right across the spectrum from primary school, primary schools, secondary schools, to education boards, to uh, the Education Support Centres of Ireland and, and, and post leaving Sir Colleges as well. So hopefully you'll get a lot out of today. Before I hand over to some of the speakers, what we're gonna look at today just with me, I'm only going to keep you for a few minutes, uh, but I did want to share with you some of the most recent uh, developments and, uh, and I hope you enjoy that. Okay. So what we're going to do today, we're going to, we're going to kick off by just, I'm going to welcome and int introduce everyone and who, who exactly we have on the panel. I'm going to briefly talk about the story so far and the, the resources that we've made available to iEducate. For those of you who, have, who aren't familiar with our program, iEducate is basically bringing Zoom to the teachers of Ireland. We've got, we've got over 16,000 teachers using Zoom right across the country, and it's been proven a massive success. But what we want to do is we want to tell the story from the the perspective of the people that are using the platform. So we've got Ava today, who's going to talk from a primary perspective. We've got Dahi from a secondary perspective. Um, we've got Terry is from Tralee Education and Support Centre, uh, and he's going to talk about how he supported the schools uh, on the Q&A. Hashmit is the head of IT in Klausha of uh, College of Further Education, and he's going to talk about his use. And Donica as well from, is director of schools for the Limerick and Clare Education Training Board. So we're really pleased and really honoured to have all you guys join us today. And what we're going to try and do is keep the presentations nice and short so that we have plenty of time for Q&A. So please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Keep, keep them coming. We have people in the background that are answering those questions. And then we're going to leave a large segment for the problems that you're encountering or the answers that you want uh, to use in, the, in that Q&A. So we are delighted and a special mention to Jane Ross, who's kindly agreed to join us today as well. Jane is the EMEA education lead at Zoom. And uh, I've loads of questions for you, Jane. I'm sure the audience do as well. So really looking forward to that later on. So Zoom and education, just a brief overview. I, I guess we, we really kicked off uh, with pushing Zoom in the education space as the start of the pandemic, but we had been Zoom users for a couple of years because we found it probably the easiest video conferencing platform to use. So why Zoom? And it's very simple. I could just put one slide up, ease of use. That is exactly why we use Zoom. We tried them all and we came back to Zoom. And what we're finding is that there were certain platforms that were, were, were being pushed uh, at government level, but the teachers go back to what's easy to use. And that's why Zoom in education in Ireland is really taking off. So organizations like the CPSMA, who are the Catholic Primary Schools Management Association, they're using Zoom. They did their AGM over Zoom. They did the webinar and the reopening of schools over Zoom. The JCT junior cycle for teachers, they're, they're an incredible story. They have 100 teachers that are seconded teachers teaching the, the Irish uh, teachers how to deliver the junior cert. And they're all done over Zoom and all done over work, online workshops. The NIPT, the Induction Programme for Trainer, for Teachers, all on Zoom. ESCII are, are phenomenal Zoom users. The amount of webinars and CPD they put over Zoom is, is remarkable. The ETB, uh, the ETBI, the Education Train Boards of Ireland, again, you'll hear from Donica how they're using Zoom. So what has happened is there's been a, a fluctuation to Zoom because, uh, I'll go back to it, ease of use. And I think that is the crucial thing that sets Zoom apart from others. 
So just one of the questions that came up in the registration process was that what's the difference? Why should people uh, use Zoom education licenses as opposed to Zoom Free Basic? So I just thought it would be very important to clarify that from uh, from our perspective. So <clears throat> with Zoom Free Basic, you can have a participant at capacity of 100 in the meeting. With Zoom Education, uh, we, we can give you 300 participant capacity. For tech support, we have the, you have the Zoom help website for free, but you also have the Zoom resources I educate and a Zoom customer success manager with an education license. Cloud recording is possible with the education license. The school admin dashboard, which probably many of you don't know about, and I'm going to show you briefly today, is very that that's available through your professional license. Uh, live transcripts, another another thing, another new feature which I'll show you. But the GDPR thing is very important. The education licenses are enhanced to protect children. And the meeting limit, of course, from 40 minutes is unlimited. And the cost, the Zoom Basic is free, but what contact I educate uh, to find out the cost of the, the Zoom education. So <clears throat> one of the things that we've done is we've, we've set up ieducate.ie as a, a resource website for the use of Zoom uh, in education in Ireland. So if you haven't gone to this uh, site already, I encourage you to do so. We've put up a lot of content here, uh, a lot of uh, video content and links to other resources. So please go to ieducate.ie. If you haven't signed up for Zoom education licenses yet, this is where you will go to sign up as well. So any, ev this is a great resource website that, and it's really taken off in the last number of months. We've got uh, you can follow us on social and then join a Facebook forum. And there you'll get I Educate daily tips and best practice. And we've got a lot of users now signed up to that forum. And it's it's proven very uh, interesting for us because the types of questions that are, are being asked informs us as well about what exactly we want to know. So, for example, there's a, we, we ran a training poll on the I Educate Facebook page uh, asking which, and, and people voted that they wanted security, best practice in schools, how to use Zoom features, admin management, et cetera. So there's lots and lots of tools available. One thing before, before we hand over to our speakers, um, for if you are the admin, uh, if you're the admin on your school account, uh, signed up with us, you can use uh, the, the dashboard. And the dashboard in Zoom is, is great because at the click of a button, you can see the, the amount of meetings or online classes that are happening. This is a school within our system, for example, that has 47 teachers. But if you'll notice, they've, they've ran 1,670 minutes, uh, meetings and they've almost a million meeting minutes with 29,488 participants and the top users who is doing the most teaching using Zoom. So all these things are available with uh, Zoom under the education licensing. So again, ieducate.ie and you'll get all that information. One thing about that I certainly love about Zoom, my colleagues will, will, confer, will agree with me, is that they are brilliant at bringing out things that make our lives easier. Uh, and one of the things, just a couple of latest updates, hot off the press, um, when you're sharing the screen in Zoom now, you can directly share a video file. Like uh, otherwise, before this, you would have to share the window with the file open in it. Now you can directly share the file straight to Zoom. And this is a feature that I'm really gonna enjoy running live events, it's gonna be fantastic. Another uh, hot off the press is transcription, that now Zoom will automatically uh, transcribe your meeting. This is an example of it here, where the three guys in a meeting, and as they're talking, it's transcribing. So this, is this uh, again, is available in your education licenses. So really, really effective tools, really, really using tools that are easy to use uh, and make teaching uh, a better experience. So as I sign off, 
these are the key issues for principals and educators, that Zoom is safe and secure to use. Zoom can be used to complement existing platforms, such as Teams and G Suite, Aladdin and Seesaw. Zoom really is the best for audio and video and online teaching, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you're using Teams, integrate Zoom with it. Um, Zoom is highly affordable with iEducate and the resources are on iEducate.ie. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to our first speaker. Uh, Ava D is a primary school principal and has been a big uh, supporter of Zoom and our project in the past. So thank you, Ava. Over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. As Leo said, Ava is my name. I am principal of Von Voskull, a primary school with over 600 pupils here in Limerick City. Uh, like everybody, we're doing our best with distance learning at the moment. We're not perfect, um, you know, and it's a tough time for everybody. But I suppose I'm here this afternoon to share my story, I suppose, or our story as to how Zoom has become a key part of how we operate as a school um, and how it's an integral part, I suppose, of teaching and learning since March last year as well. Uh, during the first lockdown last year, we were one of the early adopters, as Leo says, of Zoom. Uh, so we, we used Zoom during lockdown in March last year for our staff meetings. We used it for live engagement and live lessons to catch up with kids uh, and especially with the infant classes. Our SET teachers use Zoom as well for supporting SEN students. Uh, we use recorded lessons as a feature of Zoom as well. We use Zoom basically as a collaboration tool as well. So all our class teachers had, had their class group meetings on Zoom and we used it for CPD as well. Uh, continuing on into term one then last year, uh, we used Zoom during, from September to December. We used Zoom for our school assemblies online uh, during school time. Obviously, we couldn't mix any of the bubbles in the school. So different classes performed kind of every 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 few weeks for us on Zoom and, and provided a bit of entertainment, I suppose, delivered to all the classes in the school uh, as part of the school day. We found it a lovely tool to connect, I suppose, the whole school together when we couldn't connect physically. Uh, we even conducted one of our teachers retirement parties uh, on Zoom and different classes that she had taught performed for her on Zoom as well. Uh, we used it during term one as well for our parent teacher meetings in November. Uh, they worked really, really well for us on Zoom. Uh, even this week, there's a few of our classes uh, conducting their parent teacher meetings this week as well, this afternoon and yesterday afternoon on Zoom. So teachers are, are running parent teacher meetings from the comfort of their, comfort of their home living room. Uh, and dare I say it, it's a, it's a real opportune time as well when the parents are key educators at the moment. Uh, the, 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 pair, the teachers are, are finding the parents very receptive to those meetings this week. Uh, we used it for parent webinars last year as well during term one. We had a back to school webinar in August to explain to teachers or to parents uh, the whole, I suppose, new routines around the school. We got over 80% of our families attended that webinar and it was a phenomenal success because it eased everybody's anxieties and concerns before coming back to school and eliminated so many phone calls and so many emails and questions. So we're going to run one again in two or three weeks time before we get back to school, hopefully in March. Um, we used it for lots of parent meetings as well. From time to time, we'd invite six class parents or infant parents into the school hall for meetings. You'd usually get 60 or 70% attendance. We got over 80% attendance at these meetings on Zoom last term. So we're going to be sticking with that going forward because of the attendance numbers we got. Uh, we had various committee meetings, parents association meetings on Zoom. All our staff meetings in term one happened on Zoom. We also worked with kids who were vulnerable, who weren't attending school. We had teachers working with them remotely and we continued to use it for CPD as well. I suppose over the last 11 months, um, our uses for Zoom, if you like, or our use case for Zoom has evolved. And I suppose going forward for us as a school, regardless of what happens over the next couple of weeks, uh, Zoom is going to be a key part of the communication tools that we are going to work with going forward, uh, integrated with our G Suite, G Suite as well. We're a Google school. We use G Suite and we use it very, very effectively. And we're, we're, we're using Google Classroom as well. But Zoom is a fantastic way added to G Suite to use it as a communication tool to get collaborate and for me as well as principal to bring staff with me on the journey because I can check in week, weekly with my staff and I can collaborate with them um, very easily on Zoom as well. Um, we're probably on another level, to be honest, as a school now with Zoom because we have class teaching going on in Zoom. We have our SET teachers taking their SEN pupils. Uh, they've got full time tables on Zoom now, um, supporting SEN, one, SEN pupils in one on one support. And we're also using breakout rooms where class teachers will send certain kids with the SET teacher as part of the hourly class or whatever each day. 
Um, we're using the webinars as well, very, very powerful tool. Um, webinars have solved a huge number of problems for us as a school on Zoom in terms of using it as a communication tool. Even at the moment, we're going to use the webinar feature for school assemblies during these couple of weeks of lockdown. Uh, six or eight teachers are going to jump on a, a school webinar with us and we're going to deliver a few different lessons and stories to kids, um, almost like a weekly assembly, but being done remotely. And it's almost like delivering our own school TV channel into, into the kids' living rooms, which is great. Uh, and I suppose parent teacher meetings as well going forward. Uh, we found even with the parent teacher meetings in November, for the first time ever, we had parents attending parent teacher meetings because with Zoom, both parents were able to attend the meeting. Whereas if the meetings were held in school, usually only one parent would turn up. So we found that fantastic as well. I suppose from from the from what we've learned using Zoom as a school, I suppose if I was to throw out a few suggestions, one of the things we have during this lockdown is we have a timetable on Zoom. So you know we all know those pressures on people in the homes. Uh, where parents are working and there's pressure on devices and homes as well. So we have a Zoom timetable for these couple of weeks. So, we, you know, basically the different classes are on Zoom at different times throughout the day from nine o'clock to two o'clock or three o'clock just ensuring that all classes aren't on at the same time and it eases the pressure on devices and the Wi-Fi in the homes. Uh, we also make sure that we're going on Zoom for a purpose and that we're not just passing time with the kids online, that there's an element of teaching and learning as part of it. Um, you know, we're, we're not babysitters, we're teachers. And one, one parent said to me in a phone call yesterday, she kind of let it slip and said to me, you know, well, sure, it would be great to have more Zooms with the kids because, you know, the teachers could mind the kids for us. Uh, I'm not sure there's probably a market there for that, Leo, if you're interested in a new business. Um, I, I haven't time to set it up myself, but I'm sure Zoom babysitters, if anyone wanted to set it up as a business, you'd probably do well in terms of entertaining kids on Zoom and charging a fee for it. But yeah, like I say, for, for us on Zoom, it's making sure we as a school are using Zoom with a purpose and that it's added on to what we're doing already on Google Classroom and for the younger kids as well, what their teachers, what they're doing in the younger classes on Seesaw. So like I say, add it to G Suite or Microsoft or whatever you use in your school. Zoom is a fantastic way to communicate and collaborate collaborate with your staff. Zoom will not replace existing platforms you're using, but it certainly will complement and does complement what we're using on G Suite. Uh, the last few things I'd say is use the registration links and use the security. Like Leo mentioned there, it's important to have a school policy and make sure your administration settings are set so that you can have the security of passwords and waiting rooms locked into your settings so that no teachers can create meetings without passwords and without the, the, the waiting rooms being enabled as part of the admin settings. And um, like I said, the webinars for parents, a huge success a great way to communicate with parents and eliminates the need to be calling parents into the school for meetings. We ran a survey with our parents uh, on Google Forms after the parent-teacher meetings and over 60% of parents said they'd rather keep the parent-teacher meetings on Zoom going forward. The one last thing I would say is get the balance right as well. Uh, Google Classroom and Zoom you know, th th there's no one platform, I suppose, that's a perfect technology for schools, but it's about using the best platforms and using the right mix of technologies. So Zoom is certainly part of our choice of platforms in the future because it's the best of what's on offer when it comes to the functionality of meetings and webinars on Zoom and because of its ease of use. And it's a su superb communication tool for a school going forward. But like I say, it's part of the other platforms that you will continue to use as a school as well. We're certainly on the Zoom bus and it's made our life so much easier because of its ease of use. It's one of the best decisions that we've made as a school in the last 12 months. And, and we can see it as a vital part of, of how we're going to operate and communicate as a school going forward. So that's it from me, Leo. Gurramahagat. Gurramila Mahagat, Aver. I think uh, I could listen to you all day talking about Zoom, to be honest, because really from the from the get go, you've been using and seeing what you can get out of Zoom, and 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 it's fantastic to see it uh, come to its full use. Um, really interesting stuff around using it with other platforms as well, and I think a lot of people get confused that it's either Zoom or something else, but. Uh, the, the fact that you use it with G Suite and and I think Hashmet will will have a story around that as well and the use of it with Teams and how it integrates I think it's very important to get that message across so brilliant and look forward to I see questions coming in for you already Aver so uh, uh, looking forward to talking to you later um, Dahi uh, you might uh, you might come up on on stage Dahi is a secondary school teacher uh, in a Gael Colossa post primary school uh, in Limerick. Well, across to Limney, uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing Dahi's story. So, Dahi, thanks a million for joining us, and mm. I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Leo. Thanks a million. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm just going to share my screen very quickly. Um, unlike Aver there, I have um, quite a few uh, 
slides I might depend on uh, throughout the course of this presentation. So um, like Ava there, uh, I suppose we got into Zoom last year. It was one of the major positive things to come out of 2020 for me anyway, in terms of my teaching um, our stories on the website through the video in terms of 2020. So rather than we'll say repeating that, what I, I'm going to have a, a look at today more so is, uh, you know, where we are today and, and I suppose how Zoom has enhanced what we're doing. Uh, even from last year, there's been a huge difference. So like great lush limni, like there's a culture and, and a structure that very much um, compliments we we'll say uh, teachers and and their drive to uh, enhance learning through the use of technology you know we would have a, a digital learning team headed up by uh, uh, Miss Kieran Driscoll and uh, you know we we hold teach meets and kind of investigative uh, meetings around different types of technologies and that's kind of where I found um, you know the greatest use for 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 Zoom last year Kira would have presented it um, in in October would have presented the best use and the best practice around around Zoom. And that kind of transformed my teaching. You know, I say transform, like, I mean, this for me isn't really a case of, um, we'll say, you know, getting through the lockdown. What, what this has done is it actually improved my teaching. It's improved the learning experience of, of my students uh, in kind of three different ways. So if I kind of group them in this kind of a way, so that here we have pedagogy, okay? I have group work or collaboration. And then I have assessment. And that's kind of really the three main areas that have been improved um, in my, in, within the four walls of my classroom through the use of Zoom. What I do initially is I, I, uh, I tend to, um, we'll say, like this, share my iPad to, to the Zoom um, to the Zoom call to the classroom. And then that gives me great, we'll say, flexibility in terms of being able to annotate my slides the way I'm doing here, the way I've written on this slide here. I'm able to graph. Um, I'm able to draw, we'll say, uh, oh, sorry, I'm able to draw economics graphs and I'm able to, we'll say, uh, you know, lessons like this, um, we'll say accountancy questions where the question is open and I can run through, we'll say the mechanics of, of how to do a question for, for students. Now that's been an absolute game changer for me because we'll say with an economics graph like this, such as playing on the screen, what they what the students go home with is the finished product they don't go home with the building blocks of how to create a graph like this or how to we we'll say understand um perhaps how to draw, go about drawing it in, in, a, in a in a in an exam setting so the learning has been massively enhanced because they can actually go home then and play the video and learn steps as they go along as opposed to just having the finished graph and wondering how would they go about drawing these kind of things or, or the same with accountancy questions I, I found it's been just like an absolute game changer as i said um, the recorded lessons, you know, our feedback from students last year, last during last year's lockdown would have been that, you know, all live lessons is probably too heavy for them. But, you know, maybe one recorded lesson during the week can help in terms of they can do it in their own time. And uh, I, I've yet to find a, a platform that that provides the facility for recording lessons, um, you know, with such an ease as Zoom. Like all I do is I hop into uh, my own meeting. I, I host a private meeting and I record the lesson and, uh, you know, I can download that video and I can edit an iMovie or, or whatever afterwards. But the students find those very, very helpful and it eases the pressure on, on them because after all, they're sitting in front of their screens all, all day uh, during the day and it can be difficult for them at their age. Uh, the facilitation of group work has been unbelievable like last year I, I probably didn't make the best use of out of it you know i was putting them into group work you jump into the um into the breakout room just to see how they're getting on and and maybe their level of interaction was a bit a bit slow or or you know they kind of didn't know what they were doing but this year um you know it's far more active in that i might put a, a link for a jam board for example up in the chat function and the students can actively work together on a, on a on a kind of a mini project um and that has just you know, it's just totally lit up, lit up the classes because, again, you know, it's we have 50 minute classes and you don't really want to be, you know, just we'll say lecturing for the 50 minutes, you know, it's, it's, it's massively active and, and the students tend to love it. And then from an assessment point of view and um, the live polls, I've loved them from the get go, not only just to get students um students opinions on how the lessons are going but also in terms of you know how they're how they're um, picking up the material in terms of assessment and um, being able to allow them to co-host and, and flip that classroom and allow them to teach back or present back to you or show videos that they've created 
um, assessment of learning. Again, I find like connecting the iPad to the screen and being able to do exam questions in, in the same fashion that they would do with a, with a pen and paper. Um, I, I found that, you know, again, it has helped the learning massively. And then this year um, in economics, we have um, the first year of a Leaving Cert project and, um, you know, being able to hold breakout rooms within the class situation where I can speak to the students one-on-one -on -one about their project and share their project. And that has been a, a massive help to them in, in, in their, uh, would say, research project journeys. Um, so in terms of within the classroom, definitely it has enhanced the situation from a pedag pedag pedagogical point of view. Um, it has enhanced the collaboration among students and it has definitely enhanced um, the assessment for and assessment of learning within um, within my classrooms. Externally in Guy you know, we've we've knocked uh, a huge amount of use out of uh, out of Zoom. Uh, one of the major things that I found is that you know, it allows students to gain access to maybe guest speakers or, or experts in their field that normally wouldn't be available because, you know, the travel time or getting to schools, like when, you know, if they do a presentation for one school, they might have to do it for 50. Um, you know, so that has been exceptional. We had a, a, web, a webinar with uh, Stephen Kinsler that caused such a stir that he ended up having to do it for, for all the economics teachers in the country afterwards. Um, transition your workshops, again, availing of opportunities that might not have been there and in a local situation. Um, CPD for stu for for teachers, um, you know, well-being webinars and uh, and parent teacher meetings. Um, interestingly enough, I had my first parent teacher meeting for my own daughter yesterday evening uh, in in Aver School, and I, I must say, from a parent's point of view, it just makes life so much easier. And uh, like. Just to conclude very quickly, quite simply, like for me, I don't think that Zoom has changed education. I, I just think for me, it has enhanced it greatly going forward and going to make far more use out of, we we'll say, recording lessons um, within the normal classroom situation. It, it's not just a remote thing for me. Um, and going forward, it's, it's just going to be part of, of what I do as a secondary teacher. So thanks, Leo. Thank you so much, Dahi. Uh, I was getting lost in your presentation there. It's fantastic to see to see how it's really been used but at the at the cold face, if it were as it were. Um, we're we're flying. Time is flying. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna waste any more time. And I'm gonna hand over to Hashmet, who is the head of IT at Kloster Dulig uh, College of Further Education. Over to you, Hashmet. Everyone, thanks for having me. My name is Hashmet Parker. I'm uh, the head of IT at Colossi Dooley College of Further Education. Um, would you believe a year ago, I hadn't used Zoom, and today we have 120 staff who use it on a daily basis. We'll go back to lockdown one. My principal, Mary Hickey, approached me and said, uh, we need to get uh, Zoom. And my response was, why? Why do we need Zoom? We're a Google college. We use Go uh, G Suite for Education. We use all the apps in that ecosystem, uh, Google Docs, spreadsheets, uh, you know, slides. And as part of that package comes uh, Google Meet. And from my perspective, it's a perfect application because it's cohesive. It works uh, seamlessly with all the ap other applications in the suite. Despite my, uh, you know, adamant saying we don't need it, uh, she insisted. I bought a few licenses and uh, these were given only to a specific uh, group of staff who, who really wanted Zoom. As soon as this happened, the floodgates opened. The demand for Zoom was overwhelming. And at this stage, I really looked at Zoom and I could see that there was reason behind this. Ultimately, if you have a question of, you know, is this a better product than some of the other products out there? The answer is simply yes. Um, Zoom is a better video conferencing tool than um, a lot of the other products out there. And I haven't come across a better one. Anyway, at this stage, I'm under a lot of pressure to get licenses for 120 staff. And it's like the heavens opened and suddenly IMS were um, uh, offering us an, an option to get uh, a trial license for a period of time. And since then, uh, we've been on this fantastic package that allows us to use Zoom. Uh, for an affordable price for education. So um, I'll speak briefly about the fact that we were a G Suite college when uh, lockdown one happened, right? Come lockdown two, and we worked G Suite for 10 years before that as well. So fully entrenched in, in G Suite. Um, our ETB decided that we needed to 
migrate from G Suite to Office 365 and Microsoft. We embraced this. We started using uh, Office 365, and along with Office 365 comes uh, Microsoft's web conferencing tool, which is, uh, uh, what is it, Teams, Microsoft Teams. Great product again, but somehow staff still migrated towards Zoom. Currently, about 10% of staff use, um, use Teams and 90% use Zoom. And the reason ultimately is that Zoom is a better product. And the, made, the biggest reason is that students respond better to Zoom. And there's a lot of little reasons that add up into a big picture as to why Zoom is a better product. But um, if you have a question, like I've got exposure to Google Meet, uh, Microsoft Teams, a little bit of Cisco WebEx, uh, I can pretty much vouch for the product that Zoom is, and it's really good. I'll briefly talk about um, another aspect of Zoom, which I think is really valuable, and it's the, the level of support that you have access to. And we can even take IMS out of the equation, even though they are, you know, they're the support guys for education in Ireland. But there have been times when I needed a, a quick answer. And just by going to the dashboard, clicking on the support button at the top, within a minute, I'm chatting to a technician who was able to answer most of the questions. And there've been maybe two instances where the question couldn't be answered. And this is the amazing part for me. They put me in touch with the education lead for EMEA, which happens to be Jane Ross, coincidentally is in this webinar right now. The next day she replied, and the day following that, the issue was resolved. So the level of the product, firstly, is amazing, and the level of support, again, really good. Um, as of right now, I'm looking to the future, and the one thing I'd, I'd love to work with Zoom and IMS on is integration. I'd love, to, I'd love for Zoom to be less of a third-party application and more integrated into the ecosystem of applications that we use. So previously we used G Suite, currently we're using Office 365. Um, I'd love some sort of uh, single sign-on integration so that when you do something in Zoom, it reflects in whatever ecosystem we're using. Same username and password, calendars get updated seamlessly between Outlook and, uh, and Zoom as well. Um, but that's uh, like overall, it's been a really positive experience and I'd highly recommend Zoom. I think I've just about run out of time there. Thanks, guys. Ashford, thanks very much. Ad, and such a different perspective as well from the guys in, in primary school and secondary school. Again, the, the interesting that, you've, that you're using it in, in conjunction with other, other platforms as well. So next up, thank you very much, Hashmet. Um, next up, we have Donico Trasig, who's the Director of Schools at Limerick and Clare Tra Education Training Board. Over to you, Donica. Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks again, Leo, for having me on the call. It's great to uh, meet so many people and educators who are so passionate about the work they do for the learners in their uh, different schools. So delighted to be part of today's panel. I just wanted to start off, I suppose, by just talking about the fact that I have an overview of uh, a lot of schools across Limerick and Clare, and uh, we have about 14,000 students. And uh, we have 18 post-primary schools and three um, uh, community national schools. And I would have noticed and observed that there were lots of transgressions from the point of view of, you know, schools trying out Microsoft Teams and schools trying out Google Meet uh, and, and using Zoom. And all of them have come back to using Zoom because they find it's the most stable, the most robust, uh, the most feature rich uh, platform that is uh, available to them at the moment. And it's also uh, fantastic for, for them, for their students, because of such ease of access. Um, so schools have been embracing Zoom uh, considerably across RETB and across the country over the last year and predominantly in the last, uh, the latest lockdown. And uh, again, I suppose speaking to the, the excellent inputs from Dahi, Aver and, and Hashmet and particularly Hashmet there in terms of uh, the fact that, you know, certain ETBs use a particular platform, whether it's Microsoft Office or whether it's um, Google uh, G Suite for Enterprise, um, you know, the, the preferred option for all of them now is using Zoom, which is fantastic to see. Um, 
We've used um, Zoom ourselves in terms of uh, an education training board to reach out to our staff and our teachers and SNAs right, right, right around the, the region and it has become a, a wonderful tool for professional development. So prior to Christmas, we had a fantastic event where we organised a world-class uh, educationalist, uh, Dr. Zachary Walker, to uh, come into a webinar about well-being and, uh, and, uh, and the whole area of connectivity and uh, maintaining connection with students and learners. And we were very much inspired uh, by the research from Trinity College Dublin and the ESRI, which was published uh, in the aftermath of the first lockdown. And in one of the main findings of that fantastic research, and I'll, I'll paste uh, a link to the research, the executive summary of the research, uh, in the uh, chat bar there uh, when I finished, was that um, the researchers made reference to connection over content, which means that um, in terms of looking at how effective schools were uh, during the first lockdown, those that were most effective were the schools that were um, progressing and uh, innovating in terms of actually having a connection with students via Zoom uh, each day for a few moments, just to make sure that they could see a face, hear the voices, and interact with their students online on a daily basis. So that is a very, very powerful theme and one that needs to be, um, I suppose, uh, progressed uh, right across the world in terms of ensuring that uh, education can continue uh, unabated by the current challenges of COVID-19. So connection uh, over content. Um, so part of that uh, uh, inspired us to organize a webinar for uh, all of our staff across Limerick and Clare. It provided a fantastic opportunity for over a thousand teachers and SNAs in our ETB to come together and listen to a world-class educationalist uh, in Dr. Zachary Walker speaking to us over Zoom about uh, his observations and his uh, research and his work. And that was an, an extremely successful event for all of our teachers across our ETB. And it, certainly built a, a fantastic sense of connection amongst all of the schools and uh, allowed for all teachers to enjoy uh, for an hour uh, uh, the, the thoughts and observations and advice of one of these speakers. It also gave our chief executive a wonderful opportunity to speak to everybody uh, as one group uh, across uh, the platform. And that was something that he was extremely impressed with. We run uh, weekly meetings for all of our principals and deputy principals over Zoom. Uh, we run it every Thursday morning from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. And we have 100% attendance at those meetings each week. And again, I suppose that's our way of uh, maintaining connection with our schools, but also channeling the most important messages uh, which are changing on an, an almost minute by minute or hourly basis with regards to how decisions are being made with regards to education, state examinations, and how to manage the, the various different protocols around uh, school reopening. So those weekly meetings via Zoom have been absolutely invaluable for the effective operation of our schools in Limerick and Derry to be. Um, in fact, there was one week where we took a break from uh, a Zoom meeting and I had several calls and several texts from principals wondering where was the meeting and why wasn't it taking place? They were actually missing the, uh, the interaction on, on that week. Um, more recently, we have rolled out all of our board of management training uh, via Zoom and the evaluations that have taken place over uh, at the end of those uh, sessions, uh, which involved uh, a form which had to be filled out, um, shows remarkable and uh, fantastic uh, uh, endorsement of the use of Zoom. Prior to this, we would have uh, hired hotel rooms, we would have had to travel to venues, uh, all of the uh, members of boards of management would have had to travel to venues as well for the training, and now we can deliver it all over Zoom uh, during the course of an hour, and it allows for fantastic feedback and engagement with the various different members of the boards of management from the point of view of the chat features, uh, from allowing live questions and questions and answers during the sessions, and allowing people to, the opportunity to uh, raise hand and uh, make a contribution as well uh, during that training. So that's been wonderful for us. And as late as last Friday, um, I'm one of the people who sits on the uh, CPD committee or the uh, Continuous Professional Development Committee for uh, Education Train Boards Ireland. And we organized a webinar for all of the ETBs across uh, Ireland. And it was the first time that we ran this webinar um, uh, in, uh, over Zoom, and it was an outstanding success. In fact, we uh, initially thought that we might have 150 principals and deputies. That number grew to 300 within a number of hours of the registration form going live. And uh, we eventually had over 500 for uh, the webinar and uh, it prompted all sorts of uh, very, very quickly rushed um, uh, press releases about the success of it uh, because nobody anticipated how successful it actually would be. And none of this would have been possible without the fantastic feature rich 
um, uh, platform that is Zoom, uh, which we have come to love. So thanks very much, Leo and Shane, for the opportunity and delighted to be on a panel of such uh, wonderful uh, educationalists who are so passionate about the work they do uh, in schools for their learners. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonica. Uh, guys, I, I'm sure you'll you'll agree with me there's some fascinating insights right across the spectrum there the questions are flying in which is great and we've got people answering in, in the background i see jane has answered a few questions you might be ready to come up and join us jane for some uh live q a sure happy Here's to go. thank you so much for joining us we're delighted to have you on board of course my pleasure i'm happy to be here Great stuff. And we have Terry O'Sullivan from the Education Support Centres of Ireland, representing the ESKIs, who have been uh, major uh, supporters of the Zoom project in Ireland. You're very welcome, Terry. Thank you, Leo. And uh, guys, if I can ask uh, Dahi and uh, Hashmit, Donica and Avert, why don't you guys join us as well? Because the questions that are flying in, uh, I think it'll be great to get your, all your perspective on it. So we're gonna we're gonna kick straight off. I, and I see that you've been answering some questions in the background, Jane, around security. And I think it's it's probably one of the most uh, common things that you're asked. So can you just talk us through the 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 Zoom's approach to security in education, particularly for younger kids? Sure, absolutely. So I did see that there were questions around GDPR and in relation to the education subscriptions. Um, I want to be clear that there is no difference between um, our approach to the GDPR um, in the different subscriptions. Um, it's, it's the same. Um, what you do get when you move to education is an additional uh, privacy statement that specifically uh, talks to 16 and under. And in that privacy statement, you will see that we do not allow um, uh, children under the age of 16 to sign up for their own account. So they cannot create their own account. It doesn't mean they can't use Zoom. So as an example, um, I have a, a nine-year-old and he was just in his Zoom meeting, his daily reading Zoom meeting with his teacher. And, uh, and he uses, I, I have another account. So I have a separate account. So he uses my account, my separate account, um, but with his name um, as the participant um, on the screen. Very good. Um, Aver, from a, from a primary school perspective, what are your main con security considerations? You know, from a primary school consideration, it's about having somebody as the administrator on the account, really. And once you've got a person on the administrator who's making sure that you're using the proper settings, I, I actually act as the administrator in my own school because I'm on the on the STEM team in the school. But regardless of who it is, I mean, Hashmit does it for his organisation. It's about, at administrator level, setting passwords and setting breakout or setting at waiting rooms as two of the key features. Also, in terms of registration for lessons, some of our teachers are using registration. Not all are, to be quite honest with you, but it's it's going forward. We're going to use that more, and um, so that so the parents will have to register the child for the lesson because once you do that, then the children enter the waiting room with their proper name on the screen instead of entering the waiting room as an iPad or a Galaxy phone or whatever you know. So it's it's really the key thing for a school is to have somebody who's reasonably proficient on technology to act as the administrator so that they can do the bit of CPD that's required with all the teachers and the staff. That person may need to do one or two CPD sessions online with yourselves and IMS or look at some of the YouTube videos to make sure they're familiar. So it's really almost like having a Zoom champion in the school, if you like, you know, and I have a number of Zoom champions in the school at each class level who lead it out for me. You know, to be honest, last year it was quite difficult because I was doing a lot of it myself, whereas this year it's, it's a dream because there's a few champions within the school who support some of the new staff on the school around the security features and it's about small steps as well you know I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't say to a teacher to start using breakout rooms in your first Zoom lesson that's something that you gradually build you know I'm sure Dotty will tell you that himself do you know you gradually you start off with screen share maybe maybe then start with the chat box and gradually move on to using the breakouts breakout rooms once you get familiar with it. Very interesting I, th I think uh, from a from a security perspective Zoom moved very quickly in the education space back in March, April, uh, and introduced security features right in the meeting on, in a special button uh, that I think listened to all educators' uh, concerns about being able to rename themselves, unmute themselves, lock the meeting, th th things like that. But the defaults of using waiting rooms and passcodes 
are essential. And the registration adds an extra layer. So I think Zoom have done everything they can. I might just go to you, Donica, uh, a question here. How do schools in general use Zoom for students under 16 and comply with GDPR and Zoom's terms of service? Yeah, Leo, and that's an excellent question. It comes up regularly across the country uh, because people are you know, rightfully uh, concerned about these areas. So it all comes back to the acceptable user policy that the school would have in, in, in uh, negotiated with the teachers, uh, which they would have shared with the parents. There's templates for acceptable user policies that, which have been developed by webwise, .ie and there are fantastic resources that are available there to help uh, schools prepare mm -hmm. for these. Um, so all of these considerations will be looked at from that point of view. And um, in fairness to the Department of Education, they've also printed excellent uh, supports with regards to uh, the remote learning um, uh, during emergency uh, provision. Uh, that document, it's a circular letter uh, 74 of 2020. That provides some very, very good advice around this. And uh, that was followed up with another a circular from the department just uh, after Christmas and um, all of those are available on education.ie. So it involves, um, I suppose, making sure that uh, students, parents, uh, teachers are all very, very clear on what the expectations are of everybody in an online platform. And it doesn't matter whether they're, you know, using um, Zoom or whether they're using, you know, for instance, uh, Twitter accounts and so on. Um, it, it's important that everybody uh, ensures that they respect the barrier, the, the boundaries and the rules um, and the expectations of what the school and parents and, and students deserve. Very good. Thank you. And while I have you there, actually, someone from a different ETB is asking why they're not allowed to use Zoom. Uh, they need to set that up with their ETB. It could be their IT department. Uh, I know this question has been asked by a number of my colleagues, and uh, it pretty much goes back to the IT department of um, that particular ETB. Um, in for the case for for our ETB, we're very very open in terms of allowing whatever platforms that we have uh, assessed as being you know meeting the needs of our learners. So we're very very happy to endorse and promote Zoom, and it's our preferred uh, platform to be honest. Thanks, Tonica. Uh, Terry, uh, just from, from your perspective, I know the there's a few questions in about the education centres and how you supported Zoom and a couple of thank yous and comments in as well. Uh, can, you, can you, I guess, give us uh, your perspective on why Zoom is, uh, why you're using Zoom so much? Of course, Leo. I suppose, look, first of all, I just want to um, comment on both Ava, uh, Dahi and Donica and just reiterate what they said. And I suppose, uh, Zoom really has transformed the way the Education Support Centres of Ireland um, has operated. And I suppose uh, up to March, uh, the Education Support Centres of Ireland, uh, our main uh, way of communicating with teachers was face to face. So when, when the pandemic struck, I suppose um, IMS and the, the Zoom product was, was there in hand and we took it on board straight away. And I suppose it has really transformed the way uh, CPD has been delivered across the country. And, and both Dahi and Dunica touched on this. And I suppose it's made CPD accessible to all. Um, and I suppose Dahi really um, hit home that point where you, and Dunica also, that you can have a speaker from anywhere in the world now and it's accessible to any teacher across Ireland. So this, this, this in itself is fantastic. But I suppose the ease of use of Zoom um, has also, is, is one of the main reasons, I suppose, that the Education Sports and Survival Network has, has used Zoom and will continue to use Zoom. And it's great to hear Dahi mentioning there also that, uh, although we're all now using it during the pandemic, I think Zoom is going to be there long after the pandemic, and I think it's going to be integrated throughout. I know our own network in the Education Sports Centre, Viral Network, 21 full-time centres and nine part-time education centres, and we're all using it at the moment. And simply um, only for the Zoom product, um, we, wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been able to operate. So I suppose, as in our name, support, support is, is what we do. We support teachers in the area of CPD. So without Zoom, we simply would not have been able to offer this level of support. And I suppose the level of engagement by teachers right across the country has been phenomenal. Um, I suppose predominantly we use a mixture of Zoom webinar and Zoom meeting. Um, and we have teachers uh, in all education centers um, from anything from groups of 50 up to 500. So it's been really, really fantastic. And I suppose, uh, thanks to yourselves and I educate um, who guided us along the direction uh, with, with, with the Zoom project, we're, we're really um, delighted that we've chosen Zoom um, as our platform to communicate with teachers and we'll continue to do going forward. 
Brilliant, Terry. Thanks so much. Um, you've been a great support to the project in general, and uh, we'd like to thank you for sure for that. Um, just a couple. There's lots and lots of questions coming in, guys. We've we've uh, over over 150 questions coming in. We're answering them in the background. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the frequently asked questions and we're going to put them on ieducate.ie. So all those questions will be up there with the answers. So I know I, you can see the the panelists. They're all busily typing when they're not talking. So uh, Dahi, I just want to throw a couple at you actually from a practical point of view. There's a question in here about playing video, which works fine for YouTube, but not so much for other video files. Video is jerky and out of sync. And I think I know the answer, but go on. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had no major issues with it, Leo. Like, I mean, I've imported my own videos in um, into into different platforms, be it Keynote or, or Google Slides or whatever it is. Um, you know, I, I showed my transition years a video for a weekly challenge yesterday of, of myself swimming in the ocean, you know, and even outside of, of the educational setting as well. You know, I've, I've been able to you uh, reflect, we'll say, platforms such as Huddle where I can do video analysis. So, it, like... I, I would imagine it's the Wi-Fi would be my um would be my inclination in, in that regard because I I've certainly had no difficulties with it um over Zoom sharing any video you know I think probably the thing that's most important when you're sharing video is that you click the optimize for video button uh, that that is uh, that's essential when you're sharing a video because if it is getting jerky, if it's not bandwidth, it's that button. So Zoom works very hard at trying to uh, to play video its best. And it's, it's, one, it's one of the reasons why Zoom is better than the other platforms for audio and video is it has those sort of tools. So I would say there as well, just make sure you have the tick, uh, the tick box done uh, for optimized for, for video. Um, Jane, uh, I might just pop back to you. Like we looked at some of the features uh, and uh, I know we've got a lot of Zoom users, but we also got, got a lot of beginners uh, and I might address that for the beginners shortly. But for all the people who are using Zoom, is there any exciting new things coming out? We looked at the transcription and the share live video. What else can you share with us today? Um, so yeah, we of course we always have uh, exciting things coming around the corner that I can't talk about. <laughs> because <laughs> we're a public company now. Um, but I will tell you that we continue to listen to our education community around the globe. And um, we have uh, grown our education focus within Zoom um, throughout the past 12 months. Uh, me in this role, I have a counterpart in the US who's our global education lead, Ann Keen. We have a product development team that's specific to education now. So uh, when we get your feedback about how you want the tools to work, we are directly leaving that into the software. One example of that is how we have enhanced breakout rooms. I saw one of the questions um, that came through was about um, self-selecting, and that is now an option. So um, instead of uh, pushing people out to breakout rooms, you can allow participants to self-select which breakout room they'd like to go in and out of. So participants can uh, move in and out of breakout rooms as they see fit. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, the, the, there's, there's a lot of questions in about some of the basic features of Zoom. What I would suggest is because we've because we're limited for time, the guys will answer your question in the background, but the ieducate.ie has a lot of uh, resources around the basics and it it brings in the, the Zoom resources as well. There's a lot of really good online videos, online training videos. And as well, you have the iEducate support system if you're already signed up for Zoom with us and just email through into support and we'll help you with things like uh, showing you how to use breakout rooms. We can, we can run training workshops for your school. Um, we can run basic beginner workshops. All that is possible to the iEducate space. So what I would say is join up for the Facebook group sign up to ieducate.ie and just have a look at ieducate and see all the resources that are there for you. Um, I might just go back to you, Dahi, uh, on a couple of things. Uh, someone asked, what technology were you using with your iPad? Yeah, so um, I suppose I was using Keynote as a, as a presentation too. I, I have the Apple Pencil there to annotate. I find it's very good for, in terms of accuracy and um, it all works fairly seamlessly with Zoom. Like I said, the, if, I, if I am doing graphs, um, intricate graphs, I use the whiteboard in Zoom. I think it's just, it's unbelievable, fantastic. I sometimes take screenshots of them and, and maybe upload. We, we use Google Classroom a lot 
too. Um, we use it for everything as well. So like, I, you know, after a lesson, um, you know, I'd have... I'd have the link, we'll say, on the stream for the for the students. I would uh, I would put up the recorded lesson after, and then um, any any resources I would have used, such as websites, videos, or, or screenshots of the whiteboard or, or stuff like that. It, it just put it just to make sure students who may not have been able to make the class that they have everything that was that was um, available. Thanks, Amelia Dye. And the, we did run a competition in the summertime for the most innovative use of Zoom in education. And again, on the iEducate website, there's some videos there that I, I encourage you to have a look at. But you can use things like a, a second camera to show uh, content from a notebook or uh, from a book. You can, you, you can do so many things with Zoom. It's really there for to help with your teaching. Um, Aver, have you... Uh, have you gone down that route with a second camera or does anyone use a visualizer apologies i need to unmute there and um, no we have one or two teachers who've experimented with using the visualizers all right but we haven't necessarily gone down the route of a second you know, some teachers have used a second screen all right um, mm. in terms of being able to have their share screen on one screen and the pupils on another screen but that's i think that's as far as we've gone but like i say we have a few Zoom innovators and Zoom champions who are probably gone well beyond where I thought they'd go, so I'm not sure there. Absolutely. So one of the other things, I guess, uh, from, a, from a perspective for teaching is the hardware that you might use, just like a second camera, but also uh, small little webcams that you put on, your on top of your monitor. Uh, they're very useful. You can see the headsets that some of us use. I know, Ava, you're a big headset wearer, so, so am I. Um, uh, these can really enhance the teaching experience as well. Okay, so there's a question in here about polls. Dahi, do you want to take uh, that question? Uh, if you run a poll, uh, is it anonymous and how can you save the results? Yeah, it's in the settings, I think um, you can, you can uh, decide whether or not it's anonymous in, in terms of the poll. But generally, if I'm, if I'm sharing the results, I'll just share it via that, that option that's on the poll itself. And then um, if I want to save it and again, maybe put it up in the Google Classroom afterwards, I just tend to take a screenshot generally. Um, that's the way I would work it. Leo, not saying it's the best means of doing so, but that's that's the way I do it anyway. Yeah, like the polls are a great tool. You can like in webinars in particular, you get a, you'll get a poll report after the webinar when you've run polls, and uh, and I find them a great way of interacting and engaging your your audience and in in your class as well. Um, I found that there this week even um, you can generate um, your registration as well. You can generate your roll call and, and how many minutes the students have spent in the classroom and. I, I found that very useful as well in terms of, would say, feedback for parents as well, you know, um, telling them that, you know, ex student logged in for so many minutes. I thought that was very useful. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Jane, I might just pop back to you in terms of, uh, there's a few questions in about registration and the need for it if you're using waiting rooms and, and passcodes already, uh, the need for registration. What, what would you say uh, on that? So I just answered this question in the Q and A. Um, so a couple of things. Um, waiting room uh, will put everybody into that room um, and require the host to admit them uh, individually, or you can wait till the whole group is there and admit everybody together at one time. Um, but the the key there is nobody can get into the meeting without the host uh, vetting them first. Right. We are. We do have some enhancements coming um, in the way of waiting rooms as well, which include video preview, um, so you can actually see the person um, before admitting them, uh, make sure that they're the right person that you're expecting, wow. um, and then also communication with uh, people in the waiting room. Um, so we're looking forward to those as well. Um, and registration, uh, not uh, uh, registration and waiting room are, are two completely different things to serve two different purposes. Um, and, and they don't need to be used together. So if you're using registration as a way to police who's joining your sessions, um, if you enable waiting room, then you, you shouldn't need to use registration unless you're using that for another purpose on the back end. Very good. I, I see a comment here from Stephen in relation to Hashmet's comment regarding authentication that he just set up uh, authentication with G Suite this morning. Very seamless and users can attend meetings through their G Suite credentials. Very useful for GDPR and under 16. Thank, thank you very much for that, Stephen. Another question in from Paula. If they register once, do they have to re-register every time for recurring meetings? 
uh, who would like to take that? Might put that back in you, Jane. So it's a recurring meeting. And no, if they've registered up front, they'll be registered for all the recurring sessions. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's a really important tool in Zoom for scheduling uh, weekly classes or daily classes, the recurring meetings. Um, it just means that you're sharing the same link or the share, sharing the same registration link. You use that quite a bit, Ava, do you, the recurring meetings? Yeah, what we find very hand there, for, particular for it would be slightly different to Dahi and secondary schools in that teachers would have allocated links to certain classes or subjects they're teaching. But a lot of our teachers um, who, who are familiar with using Zoom now just do one registration link and they use that registra registration link for the entire class for everything that class do so for, for their class lessons and then the SET teacher if they're taking SEN pupils within that group they use the same link if an SNA is having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the pupil in the class it's the same link as well so it's just ease of use for the parents for the parents it's one link for that child for everything that child does for the week and from the, the, the teacher's point of view it's easy to organize that with, with the class teacher being the key owner if you like of that link and send, sending the registration link what you don't want you always have to think about parents who have two or three pupils or more in the school and and if it's one link for that child for everything they do in their class whether it's in SEN groups or it's a class group or even if it's a particular subject group within the class that it's one link one registration you copy that link we always I tell the teachers save the register save the link send it to their own email address and then it's there forevermore you know Absolutely. And look, I think there's a lot of questions in about how to how to set up the account properly, how to do, change your settings, all that information there, guys, we're going to we're going to collate all these questions that have come in today. We're going to put them up on the IHK website with the answers. Um, the guys have been phenomenal in answering all the questions in the background. We have 130 questions answered and there's still some in there uh, waiting to be answered. So we're going to keep working on that. Uh, just before we wrap up, I guess one of the key things for us is that not only are we using Zoom, a lot we've, we had a lot of people and a lot of schools sign up for Zoom before the third lockdown. And the third lockdown in Ireland um, has, has been a game changer, really, in the sense that uh, Zoom has been used a lot in the, in the first term of school for uh, staff meetings and parent-teacher meetings and, and maybe some online teaching. Um, what have you seen different? I guess I'd, I'd like to throw this at Donica, if you don't mind. Um, in the third lockdown, since the third lockdown, what have you seen different uh, in the use of Zoom and the approach to Zoom? Well, I think what's really refreshing, and it's a really good question, Leo, to see this time around is that everybody is a lot more calmer. People are much more strategic in how they manage their time. Uh, they're looking after their own well-being, which is extremely important uh, uh, during the current pandemic, given the fact that people's lives have been restricted so much. And that, uh, I suppose, um, you know, determination to find a balance uh, is really, really important for everybody, okay? So um, what I've noticed about teachers is that they have managed, uh, along with their school principals and deputy principals, to develop timetables that suit everybody's uh, schedule to the best that they can do. Um, and that is, it has also been far more innovative, far more creative in terms of how the technology is being used to enhance pedagogy. And I suppose we're continually being told as educators, it's pedagogy first, then technology. So teachers are the best in the world for figuring out ways to use technology for the benefit of their students. And it's just remarkable to see how it's being used. Uh, I can see it being used in our own family setting here where there's a daily Zoom call with uh, circle time and you know, play dates for the, the, the students in the class. And that, that sense of connection is a real priority for everybody to maintain during these times. Thank, thank you so much, Donica. I'm conscious of the time, guys, and everyone giving up their time. Before we let you go, Jane, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I, I, I'd love to know, have you guys got plans for Ireland uh, and, and, and over the coming months? And I know you guys are hiring in Ireland. Uh, I saw that recently. So have you got any plans that you can share with us? Um, yeah, we, we are definitely um, increasing headcount and support um, in the region. Um, and there's more to come. So stay tuned.
Brilliant, brilliant. We'll talk more about that offline, I'm sure. <laughs> so, guys, I think uh, I think we could go on and on. The questions are still coming in. I think the key the key for us today is just to get across the fact that Zoom has been used and all the different types of uses that are available to to you guys under the iEducate program uh, when you've got your Zoom licenses, and as well to come to the iEducate.ie for all your support. I see lots and lots of questions about principals not knowing how to set up their accounts properly and teachers using personal accounts and things like that. So I would encourage you guys, uh, we will put up the questions that we didn't get to on the iEducate website and I'd encourage you all um, to go and have a look. So we won't keep you any longer. Uh, to Jane, to Dahi, to Donica, to Terry, to Ava and to Hashmit, thank you so, so much for your time today. And uh, zoom on and we'll sign off from there, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.